Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. In this video, we're going to show you how to change out the Samsung refrigerator defrost temperature sensor. It's going to be a very easy repair and it's only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new defrost temperature sensor. The defrost temperature sensor is part of the defrost system. The main reason to be changing it out is if it's failed and the defrost system isn't working, causing the evaporator to ice up and the fresh food section to get warm. There's a defrost temperature sensor located on each side of the refrigerator. We're going to show you how to change them both out. We're going to start with the fresh food section first. Now that we have the door open, we can remove this glass shelf and the two upper drawers. All you have to do is pull these out until they stop, lift up on the front, and pull them out the rest of the way. Now that we have everything out of the way, we're going to remove the two upper shelf rails. To get the rails out, we have to remove a screw on each one. We're going to use our Phillips screwdriver to take it out. Once you have the screw out, you can carefully pull forward on the rail to release the hook in the back. Once you have it released, you can pull it out of the refrigerator. Now that we have the rails out, we can take the water tank off and the back panel. We're going to use our Phillips screwdriver to take all these screws out. Once you have both screws out of the water tank, we're going to carefully lift it up and swing it over to the left hand side and rest it against the wall so we can take out the two lower screws on the back panel. Once you have the two lower screws out, we can take the center screws out. Now we can use a small flathead screwdriver to take off these two caps that cover up the screw holes. Once you have those out, we can switch back to the Phillips screwdriver and take out the screws. Then we can take out the upper screw that holds in this trim panel. Once you have that out, we can grab our flathead screwdriver again and pop the panel off. Just have to flex it. Once you have it off, you can set it aside. And then we have to take out these two upper screws that hold the panel to the back wall. Before we pull the back panel out, we're going to lay the water tank down so it comes out easier. Now we can pull the back panel forward. You don't want to pull it all the way out. Just want to get it to drop down a little bit so we can disconnect these two wiring harnesses. They both have the locking tabs on them. Just got to release the locking tab and pull the wire harness off. Once you have both wire harnesses disconnected, you can pull the back panel out of the refrigerator. Now that we have the back panel off, we have access to the defrost temperature sensor. There's three zip ties that hold all the wires together. We're going to use the wire cutters to cut them off. You want to be careful you don't damage any of the wires or the evaporator lines. Now that we have the zip ties cut off, we can take the defrost temperature sensor out of its little mounting bracket on the copper line. There's a couple little locking tabs right here that we have to release. Once you have them unsnapped, you can open it up a little bit and pull the defrost sensor out. And then we can route the sensor through all these wires so we can unplug it from the back wall. Once you have it clear, you can release the wire harness. There's a locking tab you have to press. Once you have it released, we can pull it out of the refrigerator. 
Here's the old defrost temperature sensor next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. To put the new defrost temperature sensor in, we're just going to carefully plug it in. and Make sure it goes on all the way so you get a good connection. Once you have it in place, we can route the sensor. They give you a little bit more wire in this new one. So we're just going to loop it once in the middle so we can attach it to the lines. Once you have it in place, put a new zip tie on it. Just want to make sure that none of these wires are hanging down on the evaporator fins. So if you have to, you can put an extra zip tie on there to hold everything out of the way. Once have all the zip ties in place, we can grab our wire cutters and cut the excess off. Then we can mount the actual sensor part of it. We're just going to put it back in its housing. And then we can snap it closed. Once you have it installed, we can put the back panel back in. To put the back panel in, we're just going to carefully put it into the refrigerator and then lift it up into place. We're only going to lift it up about halfway so we can reconnect the wire harnesses. The green one with the orange and yellow wires went on the outside plug. And then the double brown went into the lower plug here. Once you have them plugged in, we're going to lift the panel up. And you want to make sure that the wires don't get caught between the side panel. So kind of push them in a little bit. As you're lifting it up, you want to make sure that this lip right here goes on this line right here so we can snap it into place. Once you have it in place, we can use the Phillips screwdriver to put the screws back in. Now we can put the trim panel back on. We want to make sure that these four tabs go into the openings snap it into place. Once you have it in place, you can put the screw in. Now we can put in the middle screws. Once you have the middle screws tightened down, we can put the covers in. All you have to do is snap them on. To put the lower screws in, we're going to lift the water tank up and swing it over to the side and rest it against the wall. Once you have it out of the way, we can put the screws in. Once you have the bottom screws in, we can carefully swing the water tank around and put it on its mounting pegs. Once you have it in place, we can put the screws in. Now that we have the water tank mounted, we can put the rails back on. You want to make sure that the little tab here goes into the opening. Once you have it in, you can push it back. And you want to make sure that this is on the bottom. Otherwise, you have it on the wrong side. Once you have it in place, we can use the Phillips screwdriver to put the screw in. 
The one on the other side goes in the same way. Now that we have both rails installed, we can put the shelving back in. We're going to put this divider plate in first. All you have to do is line it up and push it back into place. You want to make sure the locking tabs lock in on each side. Now we can put the middle drawer in. All you have to do is line it up and push it all the way back in. Then we can put the upper drawer in. And then we can put the glass cover on the upper drawer. All you have to do is line it up on its rails and push it back into place. Now that we have the refrigerator side done, we can show you how to do the freezer side. Now that we have the door open, we can reach in and take out the three shelves in the upper basket. All you have to do to get the shelves out is pull out on them. Once you have them out, you can set them aside. To get the basket out, all you have to do is pull till it stops, then lift up on the front a little bit and pull it out. Now we can reach in and take out the six screws that hold the back panel on. We're going to use our Phillips screwdriver to take them out. Now that you have all the screws out, we can carefully pull the back wall out a little bit. I want to pull it out all the way, because so we have to reach back and disconnect this wiring harness. There's a locking tab on one side of it. You have to press in and release, and we can disconnect it. Once you have it disconnected, you can turn the panel and pull it all the way out of the freezer. Now that we have the back panel off, we have access to the defrost temperature sensor. Just like on the fresh food side, you're going to have to cut the zip ties that hold it in and then unplug it and pull the sensor out of the evaporator. If you have to, you can lift the evaporator out just a little bit to give you some more room to work along here. And then when you're putting the new one in, you have to run it down through here. You may have to use a small dowel to feed it down and get it in between the evaporator lines. Once you have the new one in place, you can plug it back in and replace the zip ties, and then you can put the back panel on. Before you put the back panel in, you want to grab the wiring harness and stick it in the vent so when we lift it up, it's not hanging down and we can reach it and put it into the wiring harness connector. To put the back panel in, we're going to carefully lift it into place. Swing it in. Once you have it in place, we're going to drop it down a little bit so we can reconnect the wiring harness. There's a locking tab. It can only go in one way, so make sure the locking clip is on the right-hand side. Let's line it up and plug it in. Once you have the wire harness plugged in, we're going to lift the back panel up. Once you have the back panel in place, you want to make sure you press on it hard enough to snap it into place, and then we can use the Phillips screwdriver to put all the screws in. Now that we have the back panel on, we can put the shelves and the baskets in. To put the basket in, all you have to do is line it up with the rails and push it all the way back in. Shelves go in the same way. All you have to do is line them up with the rails and push them all the way in. Once you have all the shelves in, you can close the freezer door, plug the refrigerator back in, and make sure it starts to cool. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.